If I had a machine that allowed me to suddenly transport myself elsewhere, the air filling the vacuum where I used to be would collapse with such force that it would burst eardrums and cause nausea to anyone standing nearby. Teleportation may sound like a cool idea, but because of sound itself, it's a pretty dangerous proposition. A sound wave is mechanical. It needs a medium to travel through. Now, right now, the wave created by my voice is wiggling the air back and forth, creating areas of higher and lower pressure. When we talk about how loud a sound is, we're really talking about the intensity of that pressure wave. The louder the sound, the more intense the wave. Unlike ripples on a pond, sound waves move out from a source in the shape of a sphere. And just like a bubble gets thinner as it gets bigger, the farther we are from the source of a sound, the less pressure there is on a given area of the sound sphere. And this means that if we move twice as far from a sound, we'll be at one-fourth the intensity. The smallest sound pressure wave we can hear vibrates our eardrum less than the width of a single oxygen molecule. Yet we can comfortably hear sounds a billion times more intense. Hearing has the widest range of any of our senses by far, so we need a wide scale to measure it. To do that, we use decibels. DBs aren't logarithmic. Something 10 decibels louder is 10 times as intense. 30 decibels, a thousand times as intense. Our threshold for pain comes at sounds 10 trillion times more intense than the quietest sound we can hear. Highway traffic is about 90 decibels. In 1883, the island of Krakatoa in the South Pacific erupted, sending ash nearly 17 miles into the atmosphere with a force four times more powerful than the Tsar Bomba, the most powerful nuclear weapon ever detonated. At nearly 180 decibels, this explosion shattered eardrums 40 miles away and pushed a wave of air around the globe four times. Imagine hearing this only 3,000 miles away. Get close enough to that, and it'll be the last sound you never hear. But there's an upper limit to how loud a sound can be, and hint, it's not 11. Sound waves push air together at their peak and leave low pressure in the valleys. Now, once this part has reached a vacuum, the sound can't get any louder. Push the wave any harder than 194 decibels, then it distorts and heats up. It's moving faster than the speed of sound. Now we can go higher, only then it stopped being a sound and has become a shock wave. Now NASA's Saturn V rocket was capable of shooting out seven and a half million pounds of space fire thrust at 200 to 220 decibels. Now that's enough pressure to ignite grass a kilometer and a half away and kill everything within a few hundred meters. For space shuttle launches, NASA dumped water at a rate of 900,000 gallons per minute into a pool underneath the launch pad to keep the sound waves from literally ripping the shuttle apart. Of course, planets with more dense atmospheres like Venus or Saturn could sustain more intense sound waves and even higher decibel levels. It makes me wonder, what would a lightning storm on Saturn sound like? In fact, I'd like to find out. Stay curious. Could actual human clones really exist? Well, hey, Dyad sent me. They want me to like co-host this episode with you or something. Um, okay, gotta do what the sponsor says, I guess. You look really, um, never mind. <laughs>